Welcome back to The Lost Journeys and to the episode Everybody Hates Hugo. The only lost episode directed by Alan Taylor, who went on to direct Thor The Dark World and Terminator Genesis. This analysis became much bigger than I anticipated, so I'll deal with everything related to the tale section later so we don't have to jump around much. It is now day 46, November 6th. Everybody Hates Hugo begins with Hurley having a prophetic dream just like many other characters on the show. In this one we have Walt being missing on the milk carton, something Hurley doesn't know yet. Hurley speaks Korean, something that might foreshadow his role as a protector since Jacob spoke Korean. He opens up a magic box where the dinner is already presented on the plate. He even listens to a song that Rose will whistle the coming day. By this time it has gone a day since they had to fix the computer, since Charlie later mentions that Hurley has been gone an entire day and night. I think it was wise of the writers to jump one day ahead, since every single survivor was up all night waiting for the others at the caves or exploring the hatch, and some of them even with exhausting treks throughout the island. So the previous day was probably a day of much needed sleep. There's a deleted scene of John Locke sleeping in a hammock on the beach. I can also imagine Desmond finally getting an uninterrupted sleeping schedule in the sailboat. Hurley is on hatch duty. Kate says she's taking the next shift. Locke mentions later in the episode that they do 6 hour shifts with 2 people. Since it's around 24 hours since the last episode ended, we are probably at the end of Hurley's shift. So as of now I guess we've had a 6 hour shift with Locke at first, then Jack, and after those 12 hours, which would make it into the evening, we might have had Kate or even Locke, and then a night shift with Hurley. Said might have helped out. So we have a whole day of off screen stuff. When Jack or Kate or Hurley are on hatch duty, Locke goes into the jungle again trying to find Desmond's trail. He says he didn't leave much of a trail, so Locke would simply go back again. Jack has probably gone to the caves and gotten his personal belongings. He had set up what the script called an infirmary cave back in the caves, but at some point he gets all of those things to the swan. Hurley is also one of the cave dwellers. There is a possibility he joined Jack and got a lot of his stuff back to the swan station, or set up a tent on the beach. Hurley goes to the beach. Charlie asks him about the hatch. Hurley talks to Rose, who is doing the laundry. He takes her to the swan station, since he needs someone trustworthy that can help him with his task of organizing and rationing food. It's around here somewhere. Behind them, we see this mountaintop. It's one of the mountaintops at Kualoa Ranch. And just by fiddling around in Google Street View, I think it's this one over here. There are mountains near the swan anyway, so that fits well. Jack tells Hurley that no one gets anything from the pantry. Kate comes in and gets a shampoo bottle. The wine bottle with the message wound up at the beach. Claire finds it. At this point in time, Charlie is still babysitting Aaron. No baby here, baby here. At some point, Charlie will give her the baby and then follow John into the jungle. You want to tell me why you've been following me, Charlie? Yeah. Quite simply, John. There are a lot of secrets around here. Fun fact, the tree where Locke and Charlie are sitting is the same one that Sawyer will pass in season three. Well, maybe they should explain why they ain't come looking for us. <sighs> I could be surprised if Ow! You see this is the curved roots and there's that thin tree. Charlie goes back to the beach and asks Hurley for peanut butter, but Hurley refuses to Charlie's frustration. How's it going? It's not. On the other side of this door, there's more concrete. Said is at the hatch and tries to break through the concrete. Him and Jack will venture underneath the floor grates, and they try this one that is right next to the magnetic wall. They crawl under this one to find a way around the concrete wall. There's no success, everything is blocked. We will be back in the underground layer of the swan in the season 2 finale. Couldn't do it. But this area here is blocked. 
Said points at something, a geothermal generator. My best guess? It's a geothermal generator behind this wall. That's the power source. I'll talk a little bit more about the power on the island in a later video, but when Said mentions that this is the power source, he might mean that the geothermal generator is powering the station. I know that the show deals with a lot of pseudoscience and magic, so it taps into the heat underneath the island to transport heat to the station. That's how I interpret it. They hear the water going, and this is where it suddenly dawned on me. I had never thought about this hallway. It's never seen on the show after this episode and I can't remember anyone discussing it. Feels like I'm discovering a secret room in the SWAT station. Originally I thought that Jack went up from here but that doesn't match anything. The sink would be on the other side, the shower would be all wrong, the walls would have a different color and he would be even standing in viewing distance of the wash and dryer. This hallway is so weird, why is it here? Kate takes a shower suggesting to Jack that he do the same and she goes past him. Where did Kate go? This hallway doesn't go anywhere. What's fun about this scene is that no one talks about this room. This room is not present in the last video game, it's just a concrete wall. And it's not present in the drawing made for the last encyclopedia, but it is present in the official blueprint seen here and here. They just made an empty corridor in the Hawaiian film studio with studio lights shining up Jack here in this scene. It has a regular wooden door, you can see it behind Desmond here or behind Lark here. In this episode the camera is placed here since you see the walls here. Another unseen secret is the toilet. We know it's here based on the official maps, we just never saw it on screen. It's a common trope in film and television not to show anyone poop. Anyway, since this hallway serves absolutely no purpose, I just have to make something up. Kate had to walk past Jack and in this direction, in real life, eventually Lily, the actress, probably just walked down the studio and past the studio lights and camera crew. But in the show, I'd say she had to change. After the scene ends, Jack goes down to the basement area, probably to inform Saeed what the noise was. Locke goes back to the Swan Station, probably types in the code at some point, and goes to the armory to check out all the guns. Hurley comes by, wants to quit his job. I'm sorry, Hugo. You don't get to quit. Locke tells him no. Hurley goes up the regular entrance and then back to the jungle, near the hatch door, where he hid the remaining dynamite. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Claire goes to Shannon and tells her about the bottle and the messages. They all go to Sun's garden. Hurley goes back through the airlock and takes the dynamite to the pantry. What you got there, Hurley? Rose comes and stops him from blowing it up. On the other side of the island, Jin and Michael are let out of the tiger pit. They go away for a bit and talk. Libby's there. Michael explains that they were all on Oceanic Flight 815. After a while, they get Sawyer. This understanding is when you bring me lemonade instead of iced tea. I said no talking. He was talking to me. We're here. They all get to the Arrow. It's a small station, chiseled out of the rock walls in the mountains. And since I've talked a lot about the Swan in this episode, I'll continue with the Arrow in the next one. It's the evening now, and we're approaching the end of the episode. Everyone is at the beach. I really hope someone is checking the time, since Hurley, Jack, Kate, Said, and Locke are there. Therefore, no one's at the Swan Station right now. I think this scene is also signaling to us that the camp is now finally back together, after being split apart between the beach and the caves since early season 1. Everyone has finally moved out of the caves. And it is fitting that the evening feast arranged by Hurley is what brings them together. Stay tuned for the next episode where we will analyze the arrow and start a fascinating trek from the other side of the island.